Hi there and welcome back to the channel. Before we define a plant in the SAP S4HANA system, I brought you two slides to explain the theoretical background. So a plant in SAP can be defined as a location that holds valuated stock. I will explain you why the line between the plant and the valuated stock is dashed in a minute. Multiple plants can be assigned to a single company code. As you know, a company code is an enterprise from the financial perspective, so to say, and the plants would be the physical locations of that company code, so to say. So we can assign multiple plants to one company code. However, we can't assign one and the same plant to multiple company codes. Furthermore, a plant consists of one or multiple so-called storage locations. And within those storage locations, we store our evaluated stock. So here again, we can assign several storage locations to the same plant. However, we can't use the same storage location for multiple plants. This wouldn't make any sense either because you can imagine that a plant consists of multiple storage locations. So one of the locations can't be in two places at the same time. Furthermore, several so-called shipping points can be assigned to a single plant. The shipping points are used for the goods that arrive at the plant. Also, one shipping point can be assigned to multiple plants. And last but not least, a plant can be assigned to different combinations of sales organizations and distribution channels. Sales organizations and distribution channels are used in the sales and distribution module to send the goods to our customers in the end. Plants play important roles in the following areas. Materials valuation. So if the valuation level is at plant, then the material stock are evaluated at the plant level and we can define material prices for each of the plants. Thereby all of the plants also have their own account determination. If you want to find out more about material evaluation, I will link you another video of mine in the description of this one. Also the material stocks are managed within a plant and the material requirements are also planned for each of the plants as well. So meaning that each plant has its own material requirements planning data. However, analysis for the materials requirement planning can be made across plants. In costing, valuation prices are defined only within a plant. And if a plant performs so-called plant maintenance planning tasks, the plant can be defined as a maintenance planning plant. So far for the theory, let's now go into the system and create a plant. In the SAP S4HANA backend system, we navigate to transaction code SPRO, click on subreference IMG, and then under Enterprise Structure, Definition, Logistics General, we click on Define, Copy, Delete, Check Plant. Then we select Define Plant, and over here you can see already a bunch of plants existing in my system. If we want to create a new one, we select one of the existing ones, and then we click on Copy S. We need to provide an ID for the new plant, let's say 1234, like that. So as you can see, the plant ID can be up to four digits. We need to provide a name, let's say plant test. We can even provide a second name, but let's leave it for now. And then we have the detailed information. As you can see right now, lots of fields are grayed out. So the only fields I can maintain are the country code and the city code, which are only used in the US, and also the factory calendar. The factory calendar is nothing else than a calendar in which the working days are numbered sequentially. So meaning that the factory calendar is defined on the basis of a public holiday calendar. However, for now, let's click on apply. And then we can see that we can fill even more information, like the name of the plant, a search term, also street information. At least we need to provide a country, let's say US in this instance. Let me just put in some dummy data. We got PO box information. You can even always click on those icons over here to display even more fields. However, let's scroll down a bit. We can see the communication and telephone information. And also we can click on international versions to define organizational information in different text versions. For now, this is fine. Let's click on the arrow over here and we click on save. We need to provide a transport and that's it. Now our new plant was created successfully. Now the final mandatory step would be to assign this plant to a company code. Therefore, we go back, close this view and close the definition as well. Then we click on assignment, logistics general, assign plant to company code. Over here, we click on new entries we provide our company code and then we assign our newly created plant like that. As said, I can't now simply assign this plant to another company code. If I like, this won't be possible as you will see in a second. 
You can see plant 1234 is already assigned to company code US01. However, I can assign multiple plants to the same company code. So let's type in US01 once again and then a different plant. As you can see, this works totally fine. Last but not least, we will now create a storage location and assign the storage location to the plant. So let's go back, close the assignment section, go to the definition again. Then under materials management, you will see maintain storage location. Let's click on this one. As you can see, the system prompts us to this little screen over here where we first need to insert a plant. As you have learned in the theoretical section of this video, storage locations are always created within a plant. And one storage location can only belong to one plant and not to multiple plants. So let's insert the plant we just created and click on continue. And then over here you can see that we need to maintain some information. So first of all, we click on new entries. We provide a key up to four digits. Let's say one, two, three, four again. Test storage location and then hit enter. Next off, we select the storage location and then we click on addresses for storage location like that. We can click on new entries. And here you can see we provide a number. So basically we can assign several addresses to one storage location, which will then be numbered consecutively according to the number shown in this field. So let's insert 01 and hit enter. Now we can fill the address information for the storage location. Usually this would be the same as the plant's address. You can fill the same information you've seen before. So let me just type in some dummy data and then we can hit the arrow again. And that's basically it. You can see there is one more button over here, business systems for manufacturing execution systems, but this is mostly not relevant for a simple S4HANA core system. So I will click on, then I'm asked for the transport and that's it. So by now we created both the plant and the storage location and also we assigned the plant to the company code. This marks the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.